Okay, let's go on. Now Paul wraps up this letter with a section on spiritual warfare. Okay? Look at verses 10 through 12. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So because we are living in this window of opportunity to live for Jesus and make an impact on others for Jesus, he says here that we need to be strong in the Lord. Oftentimes, Christians are depicted as soldiers. Can you give some examples of that? Whether it's in the Bible, or in hymns, or music, or poetry. Can you give me some examples of where Christians are depicted as soldiers? Well, Paul says here in these verses, verses 10 through 12, that we will be attacked by the enemy. Okay? We will be attacked by the enemy. And he describes them as rulers, authorities, powers of this dark world, and spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And Paul has already made reference to these in the book of Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21, and chapter 3, verse 10, and maybe you remember as we went across those verses, we said that he's talking about Satan and demons and demonic influence. And Paul says here that our battle isn't against flesh and blood, but it is a spiritual battle. What does he mean there when he says it's not against flesh and blood? So this is a battle, this is a spiritual battle that needs to be fought in the spiritual realm. So, what is your spiritual realm? Where do you fight spiritual warfare? So, so for us, the spiritual realm is the mind and the heart because it's about the thoughts, okay? And it's about the will and the passion. That's where, that's where spiritual warfare is fought. That's where the battle is. Um, and he says here, he says that the way we fight is by taking our stand and not allowing ourselves to be moved. That's how we wage war. We take our stand in our thoughts, in what we know, in what our desire, what our passion is, what, we, you know, what we're committed to and what we really care about. We stand in those things, and we don't allow ourselves to be moved off of those things. So he says that the way we fight is by taking our stand and not allowing ourselves to be moved off that. So there are certain things we know, kind of as Mel was talking about here, there are certain things that we know that we have to continually remember and confirm to ourselves. There are certain passions and desires we have that we need to continually come back to and remind ourselves of. This is my commitment. This is my first love. 